It's my pleasure to invite Mr. Vivek Roy, Head Industrial Communication and Identification Process Industries and Drives, Siemens India. This business segment offers a complete range of industrial communication products covering industrial rugged networking switches, wireless remote communication solutions, and industrial identification products covering solutions using radio frequency, identification, and code reading systems. With experience of close to 16 years in the field of automation and control, he has worked in various organizations. Please welcome him on the stage. Good, good morning, everybody. Oh, fantastic. So we are all still alive in the morning. Thank you so much. So uh, a great presentation by NASCOM, I think. Uh, we all know now where we stand in terms of our uh, rankings. And uh, this is mainly uh, not because of the volume of data like what Mr. Ghosh mentioned, but it's mainly something to do with the penetration of data. Yeah? Data is the next oil. I'm sure that all of you must have heard. It will be very interesting for me to put one statistic in front of you. Recently on 6th of May, roughly 5th or 6th of May, Israel bombed the cyber headquarters of Hamas. And how did they do it? So Hamas was planning a huge cyber attack against the Israeli forces. Within minutes, they found out who, which server, which building. They earmarked the building on the Google map. And within five to 10 minutes, they destroyed the headquarters. So friends, this is what is happening. Since data is the new oil, nobody is really bothered about terrorism through guns. People can steal your data. People can do many things out of that. So cybersecurity is something that I'm going to talk about. And uh, I hope that today's session, the 19 minutes that I have left, I'm able to give a little bit of uh, know-how to all of you about how cybersecurity plays a very, very important role. Because digitalization is changing everything. We've all heard all the speakers talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, etc. But what is happening is you can look at some of the statistics which we've put on, on this slide. Roughly 526% is the growth in robots. So our friends from Mitsubishi yesterday explained how robots are becoming more intelligent. And this is driving the growth in automation or artificial intelligence using robots in the industry. Roughly 1,250% of connected devices are going to be, you know, between 2000 and 2025. So this is basically, what does this bring in? You know, you have Industry 4.0, you have uh, Make in India, et cetera, all this. We are getting more and more connected, yeah? Gone those days that I used to go in a train and hunt for a newspaper. Today I do it on my mobile. You have Wi-Fi in trains. If you go abroad, like if you go on the Deutsche Bahn in uh, Germany, you have the complete train is connected, yeah? You get the speed information, et cetera, on the graphics monitor, so from onboard to boardroom, this is how we are moving from manual operations on the oil rigs to a fully automated remote operation, like what our uh, colleagues from Bentley showed yesterday. From manual warehousing, you're moving to automated bots in the warehouses. I'm sure all of you must have seen the very interesting video from Amazon. Amazon has an excellent warehouse where there's a small bot. He has an order. He has exactly what you need. What a customer needs, he goes into the alley, picks up whatever you want, and brings it off. So no human intervention at all. Now, more and more organizations, as they are getting digitalized, Samir spoke about this slide, but I added one more point on this slide, which is the last one, which is CapEx and OpEx optimization. What do I mean by this? The investments that an organization puts in necessarily and the capex level may not be digitized. Yeah? 
We all know that when, for example, uh, we have tenders in the market, we don't have a fully digitalized solution coming into that tender. Digitalization always comes at a later stage when people want to reduce their OPEX uh, or optimize their OPEX. But why can't we have digitalization at the helm when we are going for the CAPEX? This will help us certainly to reduce our OPEX operations. And everybody spoke about reducing time to market, increasing flexibility, etc. But there are three main aspects, and no digitalization solution is complete without having a very strong network. Yeah? So these are the three aspects that we feel that a network brings in the age of digitalization. First is, every network needs to be 24 by 7 available. Right? Otherwise, you cannot achieve the number one position that we saw on the NASCOM slide. You need a very transparent network, an interoperable network. You should be able to see how many devices are connected, how are my devices performing, how do I upgrade these devices, how do I manage these devices. And last but not the least, security. I will be talking on these two aspects of security as well as transparency as I go forward. And more and more organizations, as they move for the OT and IT integration, OT is the operations side and IT is the information technology side, it's becoming more and more challenging. And why do I say that it's becoming more and more challenging is this graphic. The two gentlemen, the one in the orange shirt, who's our IT guy, for him there are three top parameters. The first parameter is security, second is user experience, and third is transparency. Similarly, on the OT side, you have the, uh, the blue shirt or the teal, the color. For him, the availability is primary, transparency is secondary, and security is the third part. Now, this is something that all of us have to worry for. Why is security on the third part? It's because I need my shop floor to perform 24 by 7. I cannot afford a downtime. Otherwise, I can't achieve those parameters of time to market, efficiency, etc. Security is certainly important, but not as important as on the IT side. Now, these two networks have, although they are networks, but they have very different, uh, I would say, uh, requirements. On the IT side, the data flows always from the bottom to the top. Seldom there are uh, chances of machine-to-machine -machine communication or horizontal communication on the IT side. But if you look on the OT side, we first of all have communication on the shop floor. So there's a lot of M2M communication. Then data travels both ways. Data travels from bottom to top and from top to bottom. So the requirements of the OT network are much, much different. Like I mentioned on the previous slide, right? Availability, transparency, and security. There's also determinism required. There are several applications now coming on the OT side which are mobile applications. They need security. They need availability. And determinism, as I mentioned, also flexibility. Interoperability. Now, what Siemens is looking for, and uh, we are working in this space of OT integration on the network side since a lot of time, almost 20, 30 years we are in this field. Now we see since OT and IT are merging, there is a requirement for a backbone which we need to make on the production side. And this production backbone has to have or provide all the features that we mentioned on the previous slide to our end users. Yeah? And mainly, as I'm coming back to my topic of network security, I would like to mention about a standard. Of course, last year I was in the same forum, I spoke about the same standard. But I would like to tell you more about this on how this standard is evolving. So, you all know the Great Wall of China, right? In the in the far uh, history, 
This wall was made so high, such that people could not penetrate this wall. There was only one point of attack. If I break the wall, I enter inside. But today we cannot, uh, I gave you that example of Israel and Hamas, so you cannot afford that. Yeah? You might be sitting inside that building or that castle and thinking I'm secure because I have so many walls, but you're actually still not secure. So that's why we come with the concept of defense in depth. What do you mean by defense in depth? You basically create multi layers of protection. You start protecting not only the wall, you start protecting the process and the people who are guarding that wall or the entry to that uh, premise. So what I mean to say is that a single protection is not enough. And the standard for bringing this single protection or, or the multi-layered protection or defense in depth is IEC 62443. We've had many standards. You have ISO 27001. Now you have an upgraded version. So this is a small chart which shows you how many standards have converged into one? Yeah, on my left is the WIB M2784 standard. This is mainly a standard by the Netherlands. Again, used in oil and gas. You know, oil and gas is the most, since it's the most critical infrastructure, they have come up with a lot of security standards to guard that uh, critical infrastructure. Similarly, on the right, on my right hand side, your left hand side is NERCSIP. NERCSIP is the North American, uh, you know, uh, standard, security standard for critical infrastructure protection, CIP. And these two standards are part of the 62443. So 62443 is across industry verticals, but mainly it talks about security on the OT layer, not on the IT layer. These are the various chapters in 62443. I had this slide even last time. But uh, the first chapter is basically a general bibliography where you have all the definitions of the standards, etc. Second is the policy and the procedures. Third has to do with the systems that are being in, uh, implemented on the OT side. And fourth is the component. So just to give you a, a feel, on which are the components that fall in these categories. So general talks about terminologies, concepts, policies, procedures. So policies and procedures are extremely important. How to secure a system? What about personal security? What about physical security? Network segmentation, etc. Third is the systems. There are sev several levels of identifying system level security. I'll cover that on the next slide. Fourth is the components like the HMIs, the PLCs, the IoT gateways, the robots, etc. Now looking at an example of an asset owner who owns the entire asset. There's a system integrator who integrates various systems like an automation system, a CCTV system, etc. And ultimately there's a product supplier like Siemens could be a product supplier, ABB, Mitsubishi, Bentley, etc. Now the product supplier develops the product, system integrator designs and deploys, asset owner owns this product. Now just looking at an example of user identification and authentication, how does these three create vulnerabilities in the system? Is on your left side or, yeah, on your right side, sorry. So, a product supplier can keep passwords unchanged, hard-coded passwords, creating vulnerability. A system integrator puts, when he's commissioning the system, he has temporary accounts. He doesn't delete that after commissioning. Asset owner has funny passwords, invalid accounts not deleted, etc. So how does 62443 covers this? All these chapters you can see cover the various aspects of uh, security or, you know, gives the standards to the end user, to the component supplier, and to the system integrator. Furthermore, a deep dive, you can see on the bottom of the screen, this is the typical life cycle of an automation system on the shop floor. Yeah? You have an asset owner, system integrator, a service provider, 
you have security targets, which are specified in chapter number two. Then you have the automation solution, which comes from various suppliers. The asset owner, he provides the security measures and settings. So for example, if uh, I own a refining uh, plant, I will tell my operators what should be the security guidelines, what is to be followed, what should be the passwords, for example, to be, when do they have to be changed? So all this come into chapter number two, uh, dash one and so on and so forth. Similarly, the component supplier also has to be 62443 approved. So we are very proud that all our factories in Germany as well as in Canada are 62443 certified by TUV. So all the automation systems that Siemens deploys in form of PLC or DCS or HMI are 62443 approved. So final takeaways, security is about technology, process and people. It's not that single wall. Please remember, you have to have a multi-layer protection. So it encompasses the product supplier, system integrator and asset owner. Assess, implement, manage. This is the mantra. Assess, implement and manage. And last but not the least, security is mission critical. Yeah. So this is my last slide on 62443. Now, how do we help? our customers implement this on the shop floor. The second uh, magnifying lens that you saw on that slide was transparency. I'll talk a few slides on that transparency. What do I mean by transparency? When you have devices on your shop floor, which are connected, yeah, I mentioned that all of us are connected today, right? When we have devices which are connected, there is ethernet coming down to the last device on the shop floor. We provide you a system through Cinec NMS. This is our platform net of network monitoring solution, but it's not a plain vanilla network monitoring solution. It helps you in not only doing predictive analysis of your network, so you will be informed if something goes wrong in your network in advance. There will be a preventive analysis and corrective analysis. So this is formed the F caps, what we call as. So F stands for uh, fault management. C stands for configuration management. A is for account management, performance management, and security management. So this NMS encompasses 62443 in itself and how. Let me take, for example, fault management. There are three major parameters what we do in fault management. First of all, monitoring of your network, discovering all the devices on the network. Be it an automation system, a drive, a networking switch, a router, or a wireless, everything can be discovered as far as they speak on this SNMP protocol. Diagnostics management, yeah, and topology. So how does this so the yellow block just shows you how it encompasses the 62443. So for example, device authentication, control system, component, and inventory. This is a part of 62443 as a part of SR 1.2 and SR 7.8. Similarly, on the configuration management, and this is really where it gets interesting. So how do you push policies? How do you push uh, security management of your uh, devices. Yeah, the uh, asset owner, since I'm the asset owner, the system integrator has installed the system and left. How do I push policies? How do I know to change those passwords? You can do that through configuration management. And policy-based configuration, I'll show you an example, a use case. Firmware management and device configuration management can be done through this NMS. And this helps you so in 62443, the chapter 2-3, chapter 3-3, and some of the requirements like malicious code protection, software and information integrity is part of this as a feature. Third is accounting management. What do we be, do by, what do we mean by accounting management? Basically having an inventory of all your network devices, all your devices which are connected on the shop floor. Yeah? What is the topology? Where do we have redundancy structures? 
and how do we validate that a designer came with a particular network, he implemented that network, and how was it working? So some from de designing to validation to actual implementation. And this is also part of 62443 2-1. Similarly, on the reports, giving you a weekly or a daily report of how are your devices connected, etc. This is also an important part of uh, the IC protocol. So on the architecture front, we have the control layer and the operations layer. So at our booth, we have our experts. Please do take your time during the coffee break to come and have a look uh, on how this software works. And uh, I'll also talk about the use case. This is a very important use case, reducing the effort needed for network configuration. This is my last slide. So through this NMS, I can trigger. That means I need to make certain policy changes on some devices, like it can be a network switch or a router. I can trigger that at 8.30 PM in the night, when my production load is less, or people are less, that's the time I need to do a certain configuration change on a particular line. And I can select that particular line, I can select that name of the devices and implement it um, and get a feedback. So this is how you can centrally manage your complete network through the NMS, Cynic NMS. So that's my last slide and uh, thank you for patient listening. If you have any queries, I'm there throughout the day. Our experts are on the stall. Thank you very much ARC for giving us this opportunity. Thank you.